Thanks again for joining me in this series where we're preparing for a time of trouble, both spiritually and physically. And in this series, I'm trying to transform my life physically and spiritually by going through the book of Joshua verse by verse while I'm getting out, I'm working out, I'm getting to the gym, I'm going to be joining a uh, tactical jiu -jitsu, Brazilian jiu-jitsu studio. Um, and I'm going to be working with some other people. I'm doing a lot of things. I'm drinking a uh, hot pepper drink that's uh, really been making some big improvements in me. Um, and in addition to that, um, I'm going through the book of Joshua verse by verse. Kind of when I get to the end of something, like I'm here out on these trails out uh, by this lake and I kind of got to the point where my knee started to hurt. I pulled my ACL recently and I'm as long as I walk by a, like a robot, I do okay. But it started to hurt. I got to get to the point where I turn around and go back. So I thought, well, this is a good place to stop. Halfway through my workout here. But this book, is, you know, what we talked about last time is that these are the greatest Hebrews and Jews that have ever walked the earth. They were the strongest. That nobody could could mess with them. And if they wanted to take your kingdom... They just simply took your kingdom because they followed God, period. And they trusted him and they knew what the prophecy said. And they knew that they were the ones walking into that prophecy. And there will be a day where there will be a generation. I believe it's our generation where we will be walking into prophecy, witnessing the tribulation of this earth right before Christ's second coming. And I'm not physically or spiritually prepared, and that's what this is about. And that's what is different about these Hebrews, because as we've gone through this book so far, we've seen in verse one and two, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Now, last time we talked about the cowardice of these, of, of the just the generation before them, because Joshua and Caleb are the only two from that generation that we're allowed to go in. And that's what we're gonna focus on today because what's gonna take place is when a time of trouble, it'll happen like that, according to Jesus Christ. You don't even have enough time to go in. If you're in Jerusalem when that hits, you don't even have enough time to go in and pack. You just run, run for the mountains, go hide in a cave is what the advice Jesus gave. And the whole world will then experience that same effect. And many people, will fail because they'll be like those first he the, the generation before joshua they were cowards they knew what god said they they were with the guy that he said it to they had witnessed everything they saw you know the waters part and fire came down from sky and devoured their enemy and the second they got over crossing the red sea Immediately, well, well, he just brought us over here to die. We're all going to starve. This is terrible. But that generation had to die away because as soon as they made it to the promised land, they just did the exact same thing. And it's important that we take a moment and kind of really realize, well, what is the differences between these two generations that we got going on here? So if we go to where that took place, where they reached, you know, same thing. You've reached the Jordan. You've made it, people of Israel. Good job. But they do this. After the spies came back in chapter 13 to spy out the land. Then they told them and said, we went to the land where you sent us. It truly flows with milk and honey. This is its fruits. Nevertheless, these people who dwell in the land are strong. Their cities are fortified and very large. Moreover, we saw the descendants of Anak there. The Amalekites dwell in the land of the south, and Hittites and Jebusites, and the Amorites dwell in the mountains, and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and along the banks of the Jordan. Then Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and take possession, for we are well able to overcome it. 
But the men who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out saying the land through which you had gone as spies is the land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we saw in it are men of great stature. There we saw giants, the descendants of Anak came from giants and we were like grasshoppers in our own sight. So we were in their sight. Then all the congregation lifted up their voices and cried and the people wept that night and all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and Aaron and the whole congregation said to them, if only we had died in the land of Egypt or only we had died in the wilderness, why has the Lord brought us to this land to fall by the sword that our wives and children should become victims? Would it not be better for us to return to Egypt? Now, the problem with this generation is the same problem with our generation, is that they were born out of comfort. You know, yeah, they were slaves, but they didn't have to figure out where their meals came from. And they didn't have to worry about anybody attacking them. They didn't have to fight anybody. All they had to do was show up to work every day and be quiet and do what they're told, and they would be fed. And that comes from a place of comfort and every American that's watching this, you know, I, I'm not trying to diminish the hardships that we've had because we've all had and many people watching this have been to war, but we have all been born in comfort. We were all born in comfort and chances are, if you're watching this, you're comfortable right now. And therein lies the problem because a generation that is born in comfort is going to be pathetic and weak. And then, then when they see that Jordan River, they're going to be like, oh, no, we cannot go over there because that is too scary. It, it's it's intimidating. Uh, it, it, it Something about that just, I don't know about that. I'd rather have my cable and, or I guess nobody watches cable. <laughs> rather have my Internet and my my air conditioning and my recliner and my new car. I mean, yeah, I got a payment, but I'd rather have that. So they will worship the Antichrist for that stuff. Uh, they'll be too afraid to cross that Jordan because it will be like a river crossing. It'll be this moment in time where you will make a decision to stand up for Jesus Christ or bow down to the Antichrist. And in that moment, a lot of people are sitting here watching this video saying, there is no way I would do that. You know, there's no way I would do that. But then all of a sudden take away all those comforts and take away the food that you got in your fridge, take away the fridge, take away the shelter, take away all that stuff. And you got to make that choice. Are you going to live for this world and keep it comfortable? like that generation of Hebrews did. They wanted to go back to Egypt. They, they were going to go back like, hey, let's go kill our leaders. Let's go back. We'll apologize. <laughs> Maybe they'll give us our slave jobs back. You know, and that's that's what most Christians will be doing in that moment is they will be uh, wanting their slave jobs back. And there will be a few uh, that will not. And there will be a generation that will be born out of that thing of, of, you know, that will dwell with Jesus for a thousand years. They'll be so different. They'll never even know of this cowardice someday, but there will be a lot of cowardice and brother will be turning in father, sister will be turning in brother, you know, mother will be turning in daughter, daughter, mother, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, there'll be rewards. There'll be, uh, you know, X amount of dollars for so many heads kind of thing. Um, and if you don't think American can, can, can do that, uh, well, read your history books. <laughs> the 49ers did that. You know, they went into their city hall <laughs> or their county hall and you got paid like 10 cents a head, uh, Indian head, you know, of course they're going to do it. Um, this country is built on stuff like that. <laughs> you fool yourself to think it wasn't. And I think that's why this is so important is because I believe most people out there, they're gonna, they're gonna go along with the system. They might not bow down to them. You know, maybe that was a little too far for some of you. They'll go with the system. They'll go along with it. 
You know, there's a lot of people in World War II that went along with some terrible things. They didn't necessarily do those things. They sure did go along with it, though. This whole world has been filled with history of people just went along with it. You know, hey, hey, as long as you don't stir up trouble in my house, you gotta do, kill as many people as you want. Just don't, just leave me out of it. Um, just as dirty, just as guilty, man. <laughs> so, you know, it's important that we go through this book. So if we go back to this moment again, and their punishment was to wander the wilderness until they all dropped dead in the sand in the wilderness. And then once none of the people that were in that moment were alive anymore, that generation was allowed to go in. And this is why this is so important because we have to see, well, what was so special about this generation of Hebrews? Because what we'll see is that in the end times, you'll have two different groups. You'll have the 144,000 Jews of the 12 tribes of Israel. Uh, these will be zealous evangelists, uh, pro prophetic people prophesying and, and warring against the Antichrist wildly successful and then you'll have a multitude of tribes tongues and gentiles of gentiles that will also be and so those are your two witnesses and we have to understand well what was it about these people that was so special why were they so wildly successful be, you know and in the end it's because they followed god's direction well, what is his direction God is a warring God. God is a warrior. Don't be fooled. He is a loving God, but he is a warrior and he loves a warrior. And he is a warrior. You have to know that to be true. So we have to understand, well, what is his war plan? Like, how does all this play out? Because he doesn't change either. He's the same then as he is now, and he will be then. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people to the land which I am giving them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. Every single foot, every single, I mean, could you imagine that every everywhere you stepped you know it's kind of like if, as i walked this path if i knew somehow that everywhere my foot stepped god gave me that i'm giving you this i'm giving you that that yeah that too that too that too that too so in their minds they're they're believing this that is the difference they believe it to be true because when they spy out the land they're going to see the same stuff but they believe it to be true they believe in the promises of god you know, throughout my time as a Christian, I've figured out there are two types of Christians in the world. You know, when you, you know, people that really believe in God, these are the ones that really believe in God. I'm not talking about the fakies out there that are doing it for the show. I'm talking about the people that really believe in God. There's wilderness wandering Christians. These are the ones that are too scared to go seize the promises of God. And then you have promise taking Christians. Those are the two different types of Christians you have. There's some that are just, they're too afraid. I'll cross that river, goodness gracious. But you know what? That river is gonna part just like the Red Sea. And when they get to the other side, you're gonna have a whole different conversation than that other generation had. In the next episode, we're gonna get into the land that's promised to them and see the prophetic reason why Joshua can confidently go, well, I know what this is. And I've, I've seen this through prophecy and I know this to be true. So keep on joining me. Um, I'm again, I got I to walk back I got halfway so far, uh, but this rest helped. It did help. So uh, keep joining me. Um, it's going to be an amazing journey. And, and um, I do believe it'll take two, three years to get through Joshua and imagine the type of condition the remnant of God will be in. It, it, the, at least those that follow, you know, that kind of follow this, not just by word, but by doing as well. So keep on, keep on joining me.